Hello and welcome back to the Tournament Center. I'm Randy Bueller. I'm joined once again by Mark Rosewater. We're going to keep going through Mark's Memories of Worlds. Uh, if you missed part one, the United States has been dominating the team competition. Yes. They've won, I think, seven of the eight that have happened. Only the Canadians have snuck through. Uh, we're up to 2002. So okay. Sydney, Australia. Yep, Sydney, Australia. First ever Latin American in a Pro Tour top eight. And there's two of them. Yes. Carlos Ramal and Diego Ostrovich. And Carlos wins Worlds. Yes. So one of the neat things about it is we had never, uh, we had an invitational that had been held in Sydney, but we had never had a pro tour. First time ever having a pro tour on the continent of Australia. Um, and it was very, very interesting. First of all, the Americans had won every single team event except for 1997 when Canada had won, but had never left North America. Right. And finally, in Australia, Somebody, not just anybody. Somebody? Yeah. yeah I look, at the, look at the middle picture on that. Right. So Kai, Kai Buda. Buda. Kai Buda is the one to finally win it for some country outside of North America. And Germany, led by Kai, manages to win the team event. Yep. Um, it's also, uh, Kai is the second person to ever win both Worlds and the Worlds team title. Yes. John Finkel had pulled it off actually at the same time. And he's the only right. guy to do the true double. But Kai picks up the career double here, yes. I guess. Yes, yes. Um, and so one of the interesting things about this, one of my favorite memories of this event was um, back when world, Worlds has changed over the years, but one of the things they used to do is we used to go to different countries and there'd be a giant opening ceremony. Mm. And uh, they always would get whatever the native you know, thing was. In Japan, they had you know, Japanese dancers and stuff. Tiki drummers. Right. So the thing I remember in Sydney is um, David Hudson is world renowned for being like the best didgeridoo player in the world. And I remember like we got David Hudson to play the didgeridoo at the opening ceremony. And I was really impressed because somehow I knew that he was this didgeridoo The world's leading didgeridoo And I, everybody around me, I'm so impressed. They're like, yeah. Like, this Where are this the is minotaurs, like, right? right this Everyone's is the, making minotaur jokes. This is the best didgeridoo player. So it, it was really, really neat that I loved, we worlds used to yeah. really have this neat flavor of, we'd have these opening ceremonies and there'd be a, a parade of flags. And so every single person, the captain would get to carry the flag and the flags would come in. So we don't, we don't have that anymore, but I, I always... It's one of my memories of the, uh, of the old worlds that was always fun. Sure. So 2003, Worlds goes to Berlin in Germany. Uh, Kai wins his third consecutive Player of the Year title and his fourth overall. At this point, the only other person even gotten two is Yuyu Watanabe. So kind of toward the end of Kai's reign, we're in Germany. And it is a German who wins Worlds, but it's Daniel Zink. Yeah, so I think there are only three different countries that both hosted Worlds and had the winner of the Worlds be from that country. Okay. So uh, America did it with Zach sure. Dolan and Brian Selden. Um, Japan does it with um, Mori, right? Mori, yeah. Uh, Mori co coming up. Uh, and and Zink then here? Zink does it right here in Germany. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about it in a little bit. There, there's... It almost happened a fourth time, but uh, we'll get to that. So Yeah, my memory of that is all the Marari's Wake mirrors in the top eight. Yeah. Marari's Wake versus Marari's Wake. That matchup happened in the round of eight and the semifinals and the finals. It was like, you know, 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., watching the Watsi staff scramble to try to keep to get, <laughs> you know, extensions for the crew. That was, that was a long Sunday. Yes. That's, that's my memory. That's probably a so, weird one. But. So my, my favorite memory from this one was, so um, Justin Gary had been the team captain yeah, a great story. of the... Um, 1997 U.S. team, and like I said, the first, the first one to lose. The, the only one to ever lose for like a seven-year gap, and Justin, they tease Justin about it endlessly. Yeah. So finally, he gets back on the team, and like Justin is like determined to like pull it back to like finally prove that he can win on the U.S. team, and he does. And yeah. so this was um, definitely a case where you know the Americans. I mean, they they had lost the previous year, but they're like, right. okay, you know, fine, we, we lost one, but they came back. And so America wasn't quite out. They're st they're still winning team events. Yeah, seventh in nine years for Team USA there. Yeah. The next year, Worlds goes back to the United States. Yep. It's uh, San Francisco. Uh, Julian Nowton wins Worlds, the youngest ever world champion at 15 years old. Also wins Rookie of the Year there. And But once again, it's Germany winning the team title. Yes. So the, my, my memory, here's my memory of, of uh, we were on the wharf in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And they were doing this promotion where they had this giant uh, vertical uh, like calendar of fake money to represent how much money we'd given away because it was like the 15th anniversary or something of the sure. pro tour and there's this giant vat of money and then when uh, um, Julian wins yeah. they stick him in it to do pictures <laughs> and so the pictures of him is like him standing up to like here in a vat full of money holding his trophy yeah I actually think he won more that weekend than maybe any magic player ever because he won yeah. he won worlds yes he won the rookie of the year and there was an end of year payout which he jumped up into yes. so by winning worlds and rookie of the year and end of the year payout he was 
Yeah, it was, he won a lot of money. So, so one of the things we had always talked about was when would the winner of the world championship, or the world champion being, be younger than the game? Yeah. Now, it turns out he wasn't quite younger. The game was, a, he was a little bit older than the game. Sure. Um, but we'll get to that. Someone finally does that, but right. it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, not at this point in time. Yeah. So 2005, Worlds goes back to Yokohama, Japan, where Kai had won his first. It's Katsuhiro Mori pulling it off, and Japan, yeah, pulls off the double. Japan wins yes. both hosting it, which you pointed right. out, but they win both the individual and the team title at the same time. Which and is something, all, yeah. And which is something only, the only Team USA had done up to that point. So really just a clean sweep for Japan as well. Uh, Katsuhiro wins the individual title. Oiso leads the team, and uh, Kenji Sumura actually wins the player of the year, so kind of a triple there. Yes, so my two stories from there. One is, that's the first year of the Pro Tour Hall of Fame. Right. And so, for the very first time, uh, John Finkel, Darwin Castle, Ula Rade, Tommy Hovey, Alan Comer get inducted. It's the very first class. Yep. Um, the other thing is, the Japanese didn't win everything that weekend. So, um, there was a high school league they used to have, and so what they did was, uh, the prize for winning the high school league was they got to play me, Aaron Forsyth, and Richard Garfield oh, wow. in this exhibition match. Okay. Okay. Aaron built the decks. It was like a standard. Um, uh, unified standard. Unified standard. Uh, Aaron built all the decks. I know uh, Richard fiddled with him to put some dragons in or something. So Aaron handily wins his match. Richard loses his match, so it all comes down to me. Okay. I lost my first game, I managed to win the second game, we're in the third game, and the reason I win is because my opponent decides he wants to beat me with Morrow, and so he <laughs> makes a suboptimal play to try to get the style win, and he didn't have the mana to cast the Morrow yet, he, he really should have gone for a cheaper creature, but, uh, but I managed to beat him because he goes for the style win, and I, I managed to take advantage of that and, and win. So the only non-Japanese win the entire <laughs> event is uh, me, Aaron, and Richard. So That's awesome. 2006, Worlds is in Paris. Uh, we go to France. It's Makihito Mahara who winds up winning this with his Dragonstorm deck, uh, beating Ryo Ogura in the... Mm -hmm finals, but really the win over Nassif right. is the one that everybody remembers. Yes. So the, the big story here was we're in Paris. So Gabe Nassif is one of the best players of all time, obviously in the Hall of Fame. You know, people put him in top five of all time. He's a really good player, but he had never won Worlds. And now he had never won Worlds. Like, it was in his hometown. Yeah. Like, it was destined. This was going to happen. And I remember when he's in the semifinals, his deck matchup was really good. Yeah, yeah. His matchup was good for the finals. It's like, if he could win here, it looked like he was just going to do it. And I remember what happened was he had to make a decision, which was he could do, he could make a move in which he gave a turn for his opponent, but if his opponent couldn't do what he needed to do in that turn, he won. Yeah. He locked the game. And like, in order for his opponent to do it, Mahara had to have like a combination of cards. And so like on paper, it was the right move to do. Um, and, but Mahara had it. Yeah. And Gabe was just like crushed. And I, I just remember that because like, everyone thought that Gabe was going to win that. So. Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, the team tournament there, by the way, run by the Dutch. And that's Julian Nauten in that picture next yes. to Hall of Famer Camille Cornelison. Julian Nauten, one of the few players uh, who have done the career double. Right. So he joins Kai and John. Yeah. Uh, uh, the only other person who's done this, by the way, is Mahara, who's yep. holding the individual trophy there, later wins on the team for yes. Japan. Um, that, that also, as we're in, um, that, I'm trying to get another story here. This was in Paris. In Paris. Um, the, oh, we had the second, the second Hall of Fame got inducted there. Yep. Um, my memory of that was, so Bob Marr Jr. was one of the people who got inducted, and he, he has two twin little girls, and that they were wearing a t-shirt with their confidant on it, and it said, who's your daddy? <laughs> Those, I remember. <laughs> Those were awesome. So. That's awesome. 2007, Worlds goes to New York City. Uh, we have our first Israeli world champion, Yuri Peleg, defeating in the finals, yes. Pat Chafin. Yes. So it's funny, because obviously uh, tomorrow we're going to have, um, you know, three of the people competing have played in the finals of Worlds before. Uh, but Pat hasn't won it. The other two right. actually managed to win. Pat's got a second. That's like below average <laughs> for his top four. All he's done is finish second at Worlds. So, but uh, the fun thing about this event, in fact, the most memorable was not, once again, the finals, but in the semifinals oh, yeah. was Pat Chapin playing Gabriel Nassif. And um, so I remember they, he was Ignite playing. Ignite Memories. Yes. So had, Ignite Memories is a storm card that you do damage to the player equal to a random card, the converted mana cost of the card. And uh, so I'm trying to remember this correctly. So he had a handful of cards, most of which were expensive, but he had yeah, like one, Chapin, one drop. Chapin goes off, uh, he generates, you know, four or five copies of Ignite yeah. Memories. And Nassif's hand is like, it's like five cards, but it's like one one mana ritual, a two mana card, and then just three fatties. So if he, yeah. he, it's like eights. Yeah. If he ever hits one of the eights, and he's only on like 10 life or something at this point. I was just, if you can go watch, look the clip up on YouTube. If you yeah, it's a great it. clip. It is. Yeah. It is just, and the crowd is into it, and Nassif is playing to the crowd. It was just, that so, was one of my favorite, one of my so, favorite calls, honestly.
honestly, from the booth. So my memory of that moment is I'm spell slinging, so I'm, I'm playing people at tables. So I'm not even watching it because okay. I'm spell slinging, and all the crowd just goes ah ah ah, <laughs> like what's going on? <laughs> but it was the most like weird thing to watch, and the crowd was just really into it, and they just kept screaming. I had no idea what was going on, <laughs> so I had to go watch the tape later to see it. So. Yeah, it works out that Nasif wins that game, but Chapin yeah. does win the match right, anyway. Yes. So it's Chapin that goes through to the finals but can't get the job done. Yeah. Against, uh, ironically enough, he, the deck he lost to, Doran, basically was an Obzom deck. Yes, yes. Didn't, wasn't called that at the <laughs> time, but uh, Chapin has now switched teams. Yes. Maybe that's what he needs. He'll have the Obzom on his side. Well, maybe he wants Obz on his side. I guess so. 2008, Worlds goes to Memphis. Uh, Auntie Malin from Finland wins with uh, Fairies, defeating Jamie Park in the finals. Team USA, meanwhile, Sam Black, Paul Chian, and Michael Jacob win their eighth team title, though they haven't won since. Yes. So I said, my two memories of this event, one was, uh, once again, the Hall of Fame was being inducted. So Mike Turnian was being inducted in the mm -hmm. Hall of Fame. And we're about to start, and there's no Mike Turnian. And we're like, <laughs> we're, so we, we get on, we, we text him, and he's like, I'm in the cab. And like, we're literally trying, we're stalling, you know, and he literally came in. We had started the ceremony, but he came in the door before we introduced him. That's how close <laughs> it was. Um, yeah, no, he was cutting it close because he, he wanted his wife to come with him. Right, yes. And his wife had called in sick. <laughs> yes. Right, she didn't have any vacation days left yeah called in sick unfortunately the uh, the right. pictures from the Hall of Fame were all over Facebook right no, I think yeah she did not get away with it <laughs> so the other story I remember is I actually we were playing I played in a side event that we were there's a multiplayer side event and the idea was we had a uh, world's wake was coming out and so we each had cards to show off for the very first time and so I had a uh, chameleon Colossus okay and so the idea was I was supposed to sneak it into my deck and then try to do something splashy with it okay so I managed to do 22,000 damage and gain <laughs> 55,000 life with it. So anyway, that, that, that's my memory of that event. Very nice. Uh, 2009, Worlds goes to Rome in Italy. Andre Coimbra is the champion, basically playing an anti-Jund deck in a, in a field full of Jund, uh, defeating a Jund player, David Reitbauer, in the finals. And China wins the World Team title. Well, my memory of this is I was on a cruise. So that's, that's So this is the one this world is the you've one never I missed. I missed Rome, yeah. Rome's the one I missed. That had, what happened? So what happened was that my family goes, goes on, like every five years we go on a cruise. We're on a, uh, and I had booked it way, way far away from Worlds, but because of the site, they ended up having it six weeks earlier than normal. Wow. And like, I, like normally it's in December, and it was, I booked in October. I'm like, well, I'm safe. <laughs> nope. It's a, you know, so I, anyway, I found out and like, I missed beat. it. So that was a bad beat. Okay. Uh, 2010, Guillaume Matignon wins Worlds in uh, Chiba, Japan. The Slovak Republic wins the World Team title. And uh, the awesome thing here, I, I know you and I had both been rooting for this yeah. forever. The Player <laughs> of the Year tournament, for the only time in the history, ends in a tie. Yes, yes. By winning, Guillaume ties Brad Nelson, yes. triggering a playoff game. I know, that was exciting. I remember at the time we were trying to figure out the math, and we're like, wait a minute, if he wins, then it's a playoff! It's a we were very excited, so. This also is the Guillaume Guillaume uh, Right, yeah, he beats right? Guillaume off the top in the finals. Yes, good, so. good friends. Yeah, so it was, uh, the, the thing I remember with this event, once again, one of the things that happened at Worlds uh, over the years is we'd have a lot of different side events and different things. So one of the things we did at this thing was we had a giant magic. So something we used to do where we would get magic cards that were, I mean, literally giant cards. And at this event, we, because it was uh, Mirrored and Besieged was coming out, we did a giant Frexia versus Mirrored in battle. Nice. And I was Frexia, and Richard Garfield was Mirrored in. And so the way it works is for each card, we get a member of the audience to come represent that card. Uh, uh, and it was a classic battle. In fact, at one point, Richard like came over to my side because he revealed himself to be Phyrexian. <laughs> uh, and then the judges cheated to help him. And but but I managed to win. Phyrexian won the day. It's right. so a little hint of where the war was going in the story. <laughs> Fair enough. 2011, uh, Worlds is back in San Francisco again. It's uh, Junya Iyanaga, who qualifies for this event yeah. actually through the Magic Online Championships, wins the final, defeating Richard Bland in the finals with a Wolf Run ramp deck. Team Japan wins the, uh, wins the team title, joining Germany as the only countries with multiple team titles, other than uh, the US, of course. Yeah, so this was in, uh, so this was the last of the old school World Championships. Yes. Um, and in fact, at this World Championship, we had announced that it was that it was going away, right. but we hadn't yet announced what was replacing it. Sure. So there, a lot of my this event, my memory is people like they loved Worlds and they're like, yeah. what's going to happen? And it was um, a little bittersweet. Yeah, we were at the wharf again, the same place we'd had at the Mountain and One. We were back at the wharf, and um, I, I just remember it was very. I, I haven't been to every Worlds. I was, I was, it was a little bittersweet, you know, that uh, I. I 
we weren't, weren't quite sure where Worlds was going. So yeah, no, I, I would say it was. It felt bittersweet at the time. Yeah. But I gotta be honest, the new Worlds. I love. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think great. the thing yeah. that the World Championships as the super exclusive, super elite 24-person tournament, I yeah. think is absolutely perfect for Magic. Yeah, no, no, no. I, mean, I, I think we sort of, like a phoenix, we sort of got reborn and out of right. the ashes, created something really awesome. Yeah, but it's even better now. At the time, we didn't know. And it exactly. It was a lot of... Uh, a lot of certainty. I know that's a, that, I remind, that event was people talking to me nonstop about, no, no, worlds, we love worlds. That's so. totally fair. Uh, 2012, Yuya Watanabe wins what, what at the time was called the Players' Championship, but it, this was the World's Championship. Yes, yes, yeah. This is, uh, you know, the tournament that has turned into worlds, so absolutely Yuya being considered a world champion for having we, won we here. We awarded it. It's the World Championship. There you go. <laughs> uh, that was uh, Chinese Taipei winning the team title in the World Magic Cup, sort of the one time, the first time they weren't held together because the Magic Cup and the Players' yes, Championship yeah. were differently, but... Uh, those are some pretty good results. And I, I gotta call out, the performance that Shota Yasuoka put on at that World Championships was insane. He just ran away with the Swiss yes, yes. and you know, stole all the match wins and everybody else was screaming to get through. You know, Yuya did pull off the win in the finals, but yeah. Shota's performance was probably the most memorable one. Oh, definitely, definitely, yeah. It, it was, it's funny, uh, Kai did a similar thing way back in the day where you, there used to be a threshold to get on the Pro Tour and Kai won so much that it dropped it by like four points. <laughs> just, it was easier to get on. He just because stole all the Pro stole points. points. Funny. So the, my memory of this one was, okay, so the um, World Championship, or the Players' Championship at the time, was in Seattle, um, and that the, the team event was actually at Gen Con that year. So they were, they were in different cities. Um, I did not go to the team event, but I did go to the, uh, the individuals, and it was held at the Shoebox Theater, um, the Showbox, the Showbox, Showbox Theater, yeah, Seattle. which is the same place that we normally do our um, PAX party. Right. Every year when we have a big party to show up the thing. And right. so um, I think what had happened was we were... We were going to have the PAX party, so we ended up having it in the same place. And uh, it was very weird. I'm so used to that being a party place that watching oh, people play Magic and it was very, very different. Interesting. Which brings us to last year uh, in Amsterdam, Shahar Shenhar, and we finally get yes. a world champion who's younger than the game. Yes, and by the, just a few months, <laughs> uh, I think he was born in um, November and Magic came on July. But, uh, you know, finally we, we had a world champion that was just a little bit younger than the game itself. Yeah, beating um, Reed Duke in the finals and what was a brutal matchup for Shahar, but yeah, my, my got memory, the job done. My memory of that was, so one of the things that um, over the years is Japan has four wins and the U.S. has three wins. So the top four last year was three Americans and Shahar, right? <laughs> Who's mostly lived his life in America. Right. But, but I mean, he's Israeli. So, Israeli. So we're like, oh, finally, America can catch up and finally tie uh, with, with Japan. Yeah. Israel's up to two. You know, and Israel got up to two. So uh, it, was, it was a very dramatic, like on paper, Shahar wasn't supposed to win. Mm -hmm. Like the tech matchup was horrible. But one of the things that's great about Magic is you never know, that it doesn't matter. Even if, even if like nine times out of 10, you're not supposed to win, in, well, the one time you can. All right. Well, thanks, Mark. It's okay. definitely been fun having that walk through your memories. We are now ready to create some more memories. It is time to head down back to the feature match area. Stay tuned. We're going to find out who's winning this year.